So we're team two of section 26 of the Western DC program, and our design is the turkey trotter. So our client, MRA Hunting, which is a large company that produces gear and shows for hunting, came to us with the problem of creating a way to move a decoy to attract turkeys for hunters. And so current United States laws prohibit the use of electrical or motor powered decoys in many states. And because of this, almost no moving decoys exist in the market. So MRA came to us to create a hand operated way of moving any type of decoy so that turkeys would be attracted to hunters. And so they came to us with really three requirements. First, they wanted it to be quiet so that the uh, turkeys, when they approach the decoy, would not notice that there's something amiss and that any loud noise wouldn't just scare the turkey away. Two, it needed to be lightweight because hunters who already have lots of gear to take on their hunting trips don't need another 30, 40 pound uh, product just to create a moving decoy. So we wanted to keep it as lightweight as possible so that it wouldn't add to the burden. And then three, we wanted this to be operable from a distance of around 40 yards because hunters need to stay as far away from the turkey as possible before they attempt to kill in order so that the turkey will get close enough without realizing that it's in any form of danger. And so our solution is the turkey trotter, which is essentially a cart and track system. Um, as you can see, the track is an I-beam with rubber stoppers on each end. We have a cart that um, slides onto the track, and the decoy is attached by, with an adapter to the cart. We have a reel and a wire, a reel and constant force spring that provide the forces that allow the decoy to move back and forth along the track. And so just to uh, show you how it's done, we'll have Spencer and Jacob demonstrate. a 60 inch track into three 20 inch pieces for carrying and storing purposes. We have a picture of what it looks like when it's broken down so it could be easily fitted into a backpack for hunting when you're carrying it around. Also the track is made out of an aluminum I-beam. It is better than traditional track in that it is less material and therefore it is lightweight. Also the aluminum we use is UV resistant so it's durable. When the, track is, when the track pieces are put together, they are put together through a pin connecting braces that we have designed. The way it works is that each piece has two holes drilled at each end. When they're put together, as in picture two, the holes line up. And as in picture three, users will put collar pins through to secure the track pieces together. The track pieces also have a supporting system at the end in the bottom of each section. Um, when they're not used, users can store the supporting system by pivoting them, by turning them in. And when using, users simply turn, turn them out and stakes will go into the holes of each piece and secure it into the ground to provide stability. The decoy is attached to a cart which runs along the track. The cart is fitted with two sets of wheels. One runs above the ivy and one runs below. This locks the cart onto the track and prevents rattling. Also, these wheels are rubber coated to dampen the sound the cart makes when it runs across the track. Attached to the front of the cart is a brush. Each time the user pulls the cart forward, this brush sweeps the surface of the track. This prevents debris from getting inside the cart. If debris were to get inside the cart, it may get caught in the wheels and seize the track. Attached to the top of the cart is the adapter. A set screw on the side of the adapter is tightened down, clamping the decoy onto the cart. This design accepts any stake diameter. Thus, a hunter may use any turkey model turkey decoy with the turkey trotter. Also, the adapter's compact design makes the cart easy to store with the other sections of the track. So, talking a little bit about operation. To move the decoy, users hold on to a reel is going to demonstrate. And what happens is that users wind and unwind this reel in order to move to pull the wire which attaches to the cart which attaches to the reel. Uh, this allows for one-handed <coughs> operation 
And additionally, the, this reel uh, stores the wire compactly and prevents tangling. This is a picture of our uh, reel and wire uh, system. And it basically shows how this allows users to operate the turkey trotter from far. To counteract the user pool, the user pulling, we have this constant force spring on this end of the track. And what happens is that the user pulls the wire with the reel uh, in the direction, in their direction. And then this constant force spring provides an opposing force in this direction. So that way, uh, when the user releases tension, the cart that was moving towards the user along the track originally can then move opposite the direction of the user. And basically, we chose a constant force spring because it provides smoother resistance than a normal spring. Uh, because normal springs, the longer you extend them, the more force they exert, opposing them. We also have rubber stoppers at each end of the track. On this end of the track, the rubber stoppers are meant to protect the constant force spring in the event of failure. For example, if the wire to, were to break, the cart would accelerate uh, towards the constant force spring, uh, run into it, and break it. On the other end of the track, there's uh, two more rubber stoppers, and those are meant to prevent the track from fall, uh, the cart, I'm sorry, from falling off. Uh, we chose to make these stoppers out of rubber to uh, basically absorb the impact of the cart uh, to reduce noise emissions from the turkey truck. We think that we have satisfied user and client requirements. However, we have a couple future recommendations for how to make our, pro, uh, our design even better. For example, we would suggest the use of high quality rubber wheels to ensure long lasting durability of our cart. A wider track to uh, basically make sure that our cart, again, has enough clearance uh, because of some of the connecting pieces sticking out currently. Uh, we would also suggest the use of a pulley system so that, so that uh, users, if there is obstacles between the user and the turkey trotter, uh, you could just, one could just put pulleys onto a stake or attach them to the tree to redirect the wire uh, to go around said obstacles. Uh, we also suggested a, a different kind of reel. Our clients, for example, uh, suggested a hand, single-handed pump-action reel, which would be a lot easier to use than our winding and unwinding reel. And finally, uh, we would like to suggest curved track pieces in the event that there's uh, obstacles on the ground or if the train is uneven for the turkey trotter, instead of being a straight track, to be customizable uh, as curved sections to go around against said obstacles. Uh, this would make our track uh, very adaptable for many different trains. And so we were wondering if you had any questions? Forgive me if I didn't hear it the first time, but you mentioned weight as being an issue. So if, with 60 inches of track, what's the weight? We actually have not measured We've never weighed it, but we've held it, and it's very, it wouldn't be any sort of problem if you had it in your backpack. It wouldn't be noticeable. Okay. Just holding it. Like the entire 60 inch track when broken into pieces, I can carry it like crooked, crooked in my arm. And it doesn't create any burden. Could you liken it to something that we use every day? I mean, is it about this, the weight of a laptop or? I would say lighter textbooks? than a laptop. Lighter than a laptop. Lighter than a laptop. Yes. Okay. Not bad. <laughs> I have a quick question. I noticed on your demo that the track flexes a little bit. Is that intentional, or is that uh, something unique to this demo? Um, like we said, one future <coughs> recommendation we wanted to have was to make this wider. That's because the, cotter, the, the shortest cotter pins we could get s stuck out a little bit too far, so the cotter pins on the top would catch on the track. So for this demonstration, we left the top cotter pins out. Um, in the future, this top plate would be wider so that you could have said cotter pins fit on the top, and then it wouldn't flex so much. Uh, could, could we just cut the cotter pins down? I mean, is it? Possibly, it, but we just trimmed it. Would it work, or are you saying it's? Well, the collar pins has the hole on one yeah. end, and the thin part on the other is a so board to cut it down. So but would it work as if, a collar pin? Anymore? If you could buy small enough collar pins, it wouldn't be a problem. But we couldn't get them on McMaster car. Uh, because basically the hole is at such 
it's at so, it's so close to the end that there really isn't that much place. There's really, there isn't really any like leeway for us to grind away. So okay. I, we, would you like to look at one? Yeah. Let me let me see one while you guys. If there are any more questions. As you can see here on the end, there's really not that much to see. How short? How much shorter does this need to be in order to fit on your cart? Um, right now it's three quarters of an inch. We would need it to be just a, a hair over an inch and a half. Or, uh, sorry, an inch, a half inch. It would need to be like a few sixteenths longer Could than Could we it. take these down to the shop, cut it down, and drill a new hole in it? Yes. Okay. Then that sounds like a, a reasonable fix. Right. I'm okay with it. But we thought that possibly just making the top would be a better solution. But anyway. Any other questions? Yes. What's the maximum length that the, uh, the, the screen can go? Uh, it's maximum is a slight, it's like um, a couple of inches under 60 inches, but the way we have it set up, its maximum stretch is like right here. So it never actually gets pulled to its maximum stretch. So the car can go the full length of the track? Yes, it can go the full, and it never extends the um, spring to complete extension. Okay. How reflective is on that? The prototype, we just let... So basically, the reason why we left the prototype uh, in this natural color is because it's easier to see. Um, so for the purpose of the demonstration, if we painted it black as a client and what we believe it should be, would be, um, it would be much harder to see with our black background. So we just believe that leaving it as color makes it contrast better against the presentation. And so it's just easier to see what's happening, especially when we have like a black wire so, why did you guys choose black? Um, the client specified that they would want the design to be black. If you have other suggestions. Well, that's fine. If the, if the client likes it black, then that's, that's good enough reason. If you were to paint this thing now, do you think that would interfere with any of the workings of it? Or do you think you know, you'd have to, to tweak something once painted? The only thing that one shop instructor brought up that he thought that if it was painted, eventually the paint might get worn off the top of where the wheels are. <coughs> but other than that, I think it would be okay. Okay. So if the client wanted to, once delivered, they could take it out, spray paint it, it and still it'll still work. We believe so. Okay. Any other questions? You showed 60 inch of track. But I noticed it's three pieces. Do you have to use all three pieces? If it was a small area, could they use just two pieces or yes. one piece? Mm -hmm. the, the client specified that they wanted it to, to move, to have as much travel as possible. So that's why we left it like, with three pieces. But if you had a, wanted, for some reason, to have a smaller travel, you could just use two pieces. Uh, last, I have a quick question. You guys didn't mention it, but um, what was the cost of this if the client wants to take this into production? You know, if they wanted to make more track, how much would a, a track piece cost and a cart cost, etc.? Well, our total cost for building the prototype was $67. Um, but 45 of those $67 were just spent on the spring, the cotter prints, and that paintbrush. So obviously it's more expensive because we're using existing products that we bought from like local stores. So we think it would be under $67. How much was Let's say the I beam seems to be the largest piece. So how much were the I beam? For a six foot section, it was fifteen dollars. Okay. Any other questions? Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.